Before the break, we asked our studio audience, have you or someone you know experienced severe religious persecution? And here's how they voted. Half the audience know someone personally who's experienced severe persecution. Well, we have a comment from our audience guests. Corey Auden is here from Voice of the Martyrs. And Corey, you're just back from Nigeria. You've seen severe persecution there. What did you see? Yeah, we were there um, as a result of uh, the riots that happened at the elections in 2011, and we were there to help uh, provide some aid to some Christians. Um, we saw uh, photos of people's um, homes that had been burned. Uh, we saw people's uh, bodies laying in the street. Uh, it was a very powerful and moving experience, and um, just to visit those, those Christians and provide some encouragement to them was a great opportunity. Now, in Nigeria, is it political uh, violence, or is this actually violence because people are offended at the person of Jesus Christ that the Christians believe in there? And this is the Boko Haram, who, which is an arm of al-Qaeda, so I would think it must be somewhat political? It is somewhat political. Um, the... the uh, the latest violence was related to the election, which is political, but it's also um, related to uh, the religious tension between the Christians and the Muslims in, in Nigeria, particularly the radical uh, Boko Haram groups. And they want to kill people who have a Christian belief because they feel it's Western. They do. They want to uh, eradicate uh, Christianity. Their, their goal is to eradicate Christianity in Nigeria. All right. Well, uh, joining me now is Paul Esterbrooks, who has traveled the world over to care for the needs of those who suffer persecution because of their faith. He's the author of several books, including Standing Strong Through the Storm. Paul serves with Open Doors Canada. Paul, thank you for being with us. You have visited more persecuted people than anyone I know. Is there some common characteristics of their suffering? There is, and it, I think I could sum it best by what one uh, Cuban pastor who spent five years in prison and 45 years under the oppression of uh, the Castro government, uh, who said, we learned during this time not to fear, not to hate, and not to harm. And to me, this was uh, a summation of of the, in, the whole situation of believers in the world, because though he stated it negatively, what he's really saying is we learn to be bold and courageous. We've learned to, to love and forgive. We've learned uh, nonviolence and aggressive love as our response to the challenges we face. And so that's the kind of thing that uh, I assess from believers that we meet around the world. And you've been everywhere, China, North Korea. You've seen all of these, Indonesia, where it's happened in the corners of the Philippines. Is this persecution, I, I want to go back to the question about Nigeria, because is it political or is it really the teachings of Jesus that are generating this? Well, I, I would agree with Corey's answer that it's really both, although um, it, it depends on the perspective you look at it from. But there definitely are, in Nigeria, there are land issues, there are tribal issues of tribal groups. In southern Mexico, for example, there are economic issues when evangelicals don't partake in the community situations. They get expelled from the community because they affect the economy of those who are in power. And so you have, you have political and economic issues, but under it all, of course, is that whole concept of following Jesus and not, not uh, being uh, not being stymied by those who would oppose that you're, you're following him because Jesus calls us to a radical lifestyle. You know, I'm thinking of the case in Afghanistan last year where parliamentarians stood up and demanded the death penalty for a person who was baptized as a Christian. Mm -hmm. What could possibly be in Christian faith that people hang on to it under that kind of threat of death? Well, it's it's the essence of faith and hope. Um, Christians who follow Jesus uh, realize that God is in control regardless of all the circumstances that fly around them. And this is the thing I think that has uh, impacted me the most as I've met with Christians of persecution, that they are totally convinced in, in the reality of Jesus in their life and the fact that God has 
uh, control in a world that seems to be out of control. One of the greatest consequences is loss at all kinds of levels, job, status, life, safety. How do they cope with loss? Well, that's, that is obviously the biggest challenge. It's the biggest challenge for us. I mean, I've just recently lost my own mother, and I mean, even just natural loss is, is tremendous pain. Uh, when it's premature and it comes from violence, it's even more difficult to, to deal with. So trauma counseling is obviously something that is uh, uh, very helpful in these areas, and that's one of the things that uh, we work at. But essentially, it's, it's faith because they believe that this loved one is with Jesus. And that's, that's, the, whole, that's the whole blessing. I mean, you're gonna miss them on this earth, but you know where they are. And you have, you have hope that you are going to be re reunited with them uh, because of Jesus' resurrection and because of the hope and faith that they have in him. Truly they are world citizens who keep their eyes not on the physical only, yes. but on the spiritual reality that this world is not as good as it gets. Exactly, and uh, you know, it's, it's standard biblical teaching. I mean, the, the, the Bible says, you know, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, use him as your model. Uh, he suffered, yet he was ultimately glorified. And so the promise of scripture is that when you suffer, you will ultimately also experience the glory that Jesus experienced and you'll be with him. And so that kind of hope uh, is what drives Christians and faith to believe that this is not the end. This is only uh, a, an interim situation and the glory will come when we're with Jesus. Paul, you've written the lessons of those many visits you did with people who are persecuted for their belief mm -hmm. in the book, Standing Strong Through the Storm, excellent book. You can find out more about it on our website. And um, thank you very much. And you can connect with uh, how to help the persecuted church and the work of Open Doors. Uh, through our website, also through the work of Voice of the Martyrs, but also on the web, there's a special feature with Carl Moeller of Open Doors on listening to the stories of persecution in Iraq. Stay tuned, and I'm going to share my thoughts on learning from the persecuted believers in Cuba. Call us, email us, tweet or Facebook us to join the conversation. We want to hear from you. I'm often asked, who has been my favorite interview? Well, it was Dr. Eli Vagia, a spunky emergency room doctor and pastor who had been tortured and jailed in Cuba for telling teenagers about Jesus and other crimes. He showed me that when you walk the way of the Christian cross, walking into suffering does not only bring pain, it also brings the presence of Jesus. When there's a call to go the way of the cross, there is also consolation. Free Christians such as myself have much to learn from putting our hearts into the suffering of the church, not just its victory. And be sure to look at our web links on how you can understand the plight of those in religious persecution and how you can help and how you can learn. So for your chance to receive a free book today, you can send me your feedback on today's program. We select five people from that viewer feedback area and our contact info is on our screen. And everyone in the studio audience receives a book as well today. For all of us at Context, I'm Lorna Duick. Thanks for watching.